This is part two of people asking me about Fashion Blaster and I'm just showing you the research article that they put out in 2019 and it has some major errors with this methodology and its structural design. And there are some things they're not telling you about the treatment group, but let's get into it. So they're showing you the results, they're showing you the conclusion, but look deeper into the actual study, not the snippets. Ah, yes, the protocol. So they had 33 subjects in the actual fascia blaster group. They did, thank goodness, have a control group, um, but they were instructing people to do the fascia blaster. Subjects were instructed on FMT by a trained technician immediately following their initial measurements. The subjects started the protocol by sitting in a portable sauna for approximately 20 minutes to warm up the subcutaneous fascia. Guys, sitting in a sauna alone for 20 minutes can reduce fat and change your fascia. Boom, this research article is done, absolutely done. You are telling me the poor people who are buying fascia blasters, read your research study, see your conclusion, think that they buy that and they're gonna follow the same protocol? No because they don't have a sauna. If this were a good study, you would have A, did the same treatment methods with a hand versus a fascia blaster versus a control. And if you wanted to be real good, you would have looked at instrument assisted therapy, gua sha, any other tool, a freaking spoon, a Chinese soup spoon. You can make research say anything. You can manipulate the factors, but when you put people in a sauna prior to using a fascia tool. Flaws, flaws. You cannot apply this to the masses, flaws. My patients will never get this to be recommended. Use a gua sha tool, use a spoon, use your hand, use a dry skin brush. Yes to the saunas, hit the plus sign and follow. Bye.